So, you know, Ibsen, of course, was Norwegian, and Anderson, Hans Christian Andersen, was Danish. Ibsen was Norwegian, although he wrote in, in a language that was actually almost Danish, called Dano-Norwegian, as a matter of fact, at the time. Huh. And uh, when you read Ibsen today in a Norwegian publication, you're not reading exactly what, what Ibsen wrote. I see. And then Selma Lagerlöf, of course, was Swedish. So we yeah, have... she she is very Swedish indeed. <laughs> so what do you what do you mean by that? Well, I, I I think that was part of her appeal. This novel, of course, became a kind of national book because uh, uh, the novel corresponded, I think, to uh, the view that Swedes had of themselves as exuberant, lively people given to uh, quick <laughs> impulses and possessing a very interesting history. And also, there, of course, there's a strong moral strain, this Lutheran moral strain in, uh, in the Estabelling saga. Gösta settles down at the end of the novel. First, he's a, a lively, exuberant fellow and a drunk, and then he, uh, he set, settles down in the woods to do good at the end. And I think this, this flattered the uh, Swedish national consciousness very much indeed. So was, when the novel was first published, was, it, was there anything of a scandal about it? Because as you're reading it, I mean, even immediately as the story opens, you, you meet the title character, the defrocked minister, Josta Berling, who, you know, is this kind of Byronic, romantic soul, perhaps not well suited to clerical uh, role. He's a, a, something of a womanizer. He, he mm -hmm. loves to drink. How, how is that aspect? As far as I, uh, as I know, uh, there, there wasn't any real scandal uh, uh, about the uh, defrocked Lutheran pastor or priest, as he's called in Swedish, priest, uh, because uh, this was a phenomenon that was well known. Uh, the, the national poet, Esaias Tegner, uh, who was Bishop of Vecchio in the first part of the 19th century, it was well known that he was a womanizer. And, and the phenomenon of the drunken priest, uh, uh, well, this appears, for example, in, in Strindberg. Uh, this is not an unusual thing. So I don't think there was any real moral shock. Uh, when the uh, the novel appeared, although it's always dangerous to make flat statements of that sort, um, it was uh, the the criticism came more from professional critics uh, who thought that, that the novel was uh, terribly chopped up and in some ways uh, very old fashioned with all the outcries and the apostrophes and the and the narrow escapes and things of that sort. So how how is it different then from, uh, you know, the the, the Swedish Academy uh, selected Selma Lagerlöf as as the recipient of the Nobel Prize in 1909, and you know they could have selected her compatriot August Strindberg, uh, who is who who is the only Swedish author up until now represented in the Penguin Classics. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I understand, but Strindberg. Uh, uh, was was uh, who was uh, what was he uh, uh, nine years older than than Selma? Uh, he he had had constantly offended uh, the Swedish public. Strindberg, of course, was very very envious of Selma, made fun of her name, and uh, said, "Well, after all, uh, she writes novels, but I've written all of these great plays." And, of course, he had written novels as well. Strindberg wasn't flattering at all to the Swedish self-image, if I may make a daring statement, whereas Selma was. Some people have called the saga of Josta Berling the Swedish gone with the wind. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 could, I can see that, I can, although uh, it's horrifying to think. Uh, but it is, again, a romanticization of a... Uh, of, of a, a vanished world. Yes, I could see a comparison with uh, Gone with the Wind, except 
uh, sell the novel, I think it's a great deal better. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much.